Favorite TV, Advancing Kingdom Lifestyle. afternoon good evening it depends on where you're watching from this is your favorite program the pillars of faith and i'm your host pastor mark mutinda it's a great great honor for me to come to your spaces i know some of you are watching from your homes uh, others in your in hotel rooms wherever you are we want to welcome you to this program and uh, we have dubbed this program conversations around the scriptures uh, in this program, we delve into matters discipleship, and we talked about uh, the pillars that constitute our faith. We have been doing this program for a very long time, and uh, recently we began on a very interesting subject on the believer and the word. I've been hosting my dear friends Samuel Karanja and uh, Geoffrey Mashia. They have been doing a great work, and uh, last program we were dealing with uh, matters to do with how to exegete the Word of God. In other words, extracting revelation from the Logos. We also took time to get questions from you, our viewer, and I believe that we were able to respond to those questions and you are blessed. This is a live uh, show. And as I said in the last program, the reason why we are doing it is so that we can be able to interact with you, our viewer. And I want to ask you, even as we continue, uh, to consider, you know, just sharing the link to your friends, uh, either on Facebook or YouTube, if you're watching by social media. And of course, as we continue, if you have any question, we'll be glad to respond to your question. So once again, we want to welcome you, and I believe you shall be blessed. Um, my friends, I want to say thank you again for coming. And I think we can begin in our, my far right and uh, uh, ask you to greet uh, the viewers. And then after that, we'll, we'll also uh, give Geoffrey an opportunity. Thank you very much, Pastor Mark. It has been a pleasure being with you uh, in this program. I think it's one of the most uh, interesting programs we have in the Elevate TV because of uh, enlightening the viewers on the fundamentals of faith. One of them being a study of the word, mm. and others, of course, being prayer and other spiritual matters. Mm. So it has been wonderful going through the issue of study, uh, studying of the word, the discipline that goes with study, and the importance of the word. And uh, the issues of the importance of the word cannot be overemphasized. This is the lifeline of, of believers. Yeah. Jesus said that man cannot live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds. Proceeds means, means it must continue. Mm. Continually feed the spirit, the spirit man. Because man is a spirit man. And he lives, he's developed, he's empowered, he's strengthened and fed by the continuous feeding of the word. Wow. So the issue of feeding and studying of the spirit man uh, by the word of God is crucial to spiritual maturity and growth. Very, very true. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, uh, Samuel. Um, it has been an honor to have you here. Um, sir, Geoffrey, yeah. uh, please greet our viewers and uh, just say a few things as we begin. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. It's been a journey indeed, and I must believe that there is an impact that is happening in your life, wherever you are. And Hebrews 1.1 1, 1 says that how in the former days... God spoke through our fathers by the prophets, but has in these last days spoken to us by his son. And that son, who is Jesus Christ, is the word of God. Mm. Stay tuned for more engagement. Wow, Amen. thank you, thank you so much. Um, I want maybe, um, for the sake of our viewers, yeah. um, probably they were not able to, to be in our previous show. Um, I'll begin with you, Geoffrey. Uh, just three minutes yeah. to do a recap of what we said uh, last program, at least the highlights. Thank yeah. you. It was a very interactive session that we had last week, but one, 
and I do believe you are getting something out of these particular programs. And so what we really did labor last time was the place of correct interpretation of the Bible. Mm. It came out very clear that we can use the same scripture and mm -hmm. get different meanings. Yeah. And so you realize there are some people who want to justify all that which they do mm. by a reference to the scriptures that we have. Mm -hmm. Therefore, how do we avoid su such? So we came to understand one is by employing the right methods of interpreting of the written word. Mm. Number one, we did say scripture must interpret scripture. Yeah. So there is no way you will run with one scripture that tends to uh, contradict another portion of the Bible. Mm. So if that happens, of course, we know there is a wrong bit of interpretation of the word of God. Yeah. Number two, we did talk a lot about the issue of context and we cannot run out of it. And I can say there are times we have misquoted God. Mm -hmm. in the name of quoting the Bible. Yeah. And that happens when we lose track of the context. Therefore, we think that which we want to hear is what God said, whereas in reality, mm. the context was not put in place as required. Mm. Number three, we did again say, we must have a look at the language that was used. For example, if you hear the word knowledge, e.g. grow in the knowledge of God, mm. now we should not just assume this refers to information. We must try to go back. What was the word that was used? I mean, what was the language used at that time? Mm. And out of that language, what is the meaning of this particular word and how does it apply to you? And so lack of knowledge, even if it's just a small bit of it, of the real language of the Bible, may be a hindrance in the right interpretation of the word of God. Amazing, Thank amazing. And, and actually, if someone wants to get the exhaustive yeah. you know, explanation, we can commend them to, to our previous program. Yeah. Uh, I think, Samuel, um, maybe two, just two major highlights you feel we have addressed in this series on the believer and the word. To me, w one of the most uh, amazing part of it is that uh, why do we study the word? Because we say the Bible is made of, 60, of 66 books and uh, so it is already a, a library in itself mm. and uh, it can be very complex to actually get uh, value out of it and therefore the issue of understanding the Bible is very important and uh, as Geoffrey has said, interpreting every scripture and uh, using the right means to interpret the scripture. Mm. Now, the reason why study is important, uh, we say it is because this word is supposed to be food to the spirit man. We, we, we are not talking about studying the word for intellectual benefits. Yeah. We are talking here about uh, a study of the word for spiritual purposes, to grow spiritually and to know God. Mm. And uh, knowing God through the Bible, through the scriptures, has to do with uh, getting revelation, not just the pages of the, of, of the, of the Bible, just mm. the, the, what we read uh, from the pages of the book, but uh, deeper inside there, there is something we must draw for our spirit man. And therefore, the place of the Holy Spirit becomes very important so that we can be able to draw the values that are hidden in the pages of the scripture. And that's why we talked about the Rema versus the Logos. Mm. We need to go deeper from the Logos to get the Rema so that our spirits can be fed by the word. Mm. When our spirits are fed by the word, just like uh, uh, Acts, Acts chapter 20 says, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, mm. which is able to build you. That building comes by the word of God. Mm. Not intellectual building, it's a spiritual building. Because the word, uh, once uh, eaten or received uh, with the truths and the values and the contents in it, is able to build our spirits. And when spirit, the spirit man is built by the word, then we become strong and we grow spiritually. Yeah. So not the intellectual, because we have so many people who are intellectual, they have studied the Bible maybe for their says, or for other purposes and arguments. But we are talking about uh, preparing your heart before the Lord and allowing God to speak to you through the pages of scripture mm. 
having a consistent time to read and to depend on the Holy Spirit to interpret the Bible and to show you the depths and the hidden matters in the, in the Word so that your spirit man can benefit. I think that was a very, very important matter. Um, you know, the Logos, the Rema. Yeah. The Logos being the, the written Word and then the Rema is a revelation you yes. get from that. Mm -hmm. um, it came out very, very strongly. <clears throat> so, uh, viewers, we want to welcome you if you are tuning in at this time and uh, want to really appreciate even on behalf of my guests for choosing to come in and uh, to this discussion. We, we really want to engage you and uh, you engaging with us. And therefore, I want to request again, if you're watching by social media or on social media, please consider sharing the link, uh, put it uh, to the WhatsApp groups that you belong, to your friends, and even on your page, uh, and that's going to be great. We'll truly be grateful. Uh, on the same note, we want to ask if you have any question uh, to do with the word and some of the things you've heard us say, uh, please just send it and uh, we are going to be uh, responsible to respond to you uh, because as we said, the purpose of this series is to help you on this journey. How do you navigate in, in, in the word? And uh, that's going to be a blessing. Um, uh, Samuel and Geoffrey, it's, it's amazing because questions are already beginning to come. Okay. And there is a question asked by Jeff K. Uh, he says, very delightful to be part of this episode. Uh, so that means he has been following through uh, the, the whole episode. Then there's a question he asks. And I found it to be interesting because it is what we wanted to discuss today. Um, the question is, when it comes to Bible reading, I have always wondered where to begin. <laughs> and I think it's a question yeah. uh, he's asking on behalf of many people. Uh, book by book, topic wise, what is the best practice to read by the Bible consistently? Now, um, so I want to pick this question and just uh, frame it in, in our context now. Yeah. We have talked about many things. Um, the history of the Bible and all of that. But then the rubber meets the road. I am a new believer. I want to start reading the Bible. It is a volume of books. Where do I start? Uh, should I uh, approach it the way people used to do it in those days where <laughs> you just wake up, fold your Bible, and say, Lord, by your spirit, show me where to read and then you flip it, flip it open. Wherever it lands, that's your meditation for the day. Uh, is, is, is that where we begin? Uh, really, where do we start? Uh, I think it's a very valid question. Yeah, that's true. And I want to begin with you, Samuel, and um, ask you, maybe step into that, and uh, let's discuss about it. Okay. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you uh, for the viewer who has asked the question, because I think that's a very valid question, because yeah. most people want to read and study the, 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 the Bible, but they are not able to do, to do so. Or they do so, but not effectively as they should. Mm -hmm. And therefore it's good to at least to have the basic knowledge of some of the methods that you need to kind of, uh, employ mm -hmm. in uh, the study of the, of, the, of the Bible. As we say, the Bible is 66 books, so it can be a little bit confusing. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I go to the library and find so many books and you wonder which one to buy. Yeah. So I think somebody can also be confused. Uh, if the Bible is 66 books, where do I start? New Testament, Old Testament, and how do we approach it? Now, there are so many ways of, uh, 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 there are basically four. We can do basically four methods mm -hmm. of the study of the word. But we, before we go to that, uh, we want to emphasize that the reason why we are studying, doing Bible study is for knowing God and growing spiritually. Because if we study the, the word, the, the aim of the study is very important. Before you start the journey yeah. of study, what are you st why are you studying? Because they are, I said we are not studying, we are not teaching about study of the word for intellectual uh, benefits, mm. but more for the spiritual reasons. And that is knowing God and growing spiritually or feeding our spirits. Because the word of God is food to our spirit man. Mm. And therefore, uh, before, from the onset, you must have the right the right notion and the right direction mm. and the right aim so that you can get the results that you need. Uh, 
Now we will look up, uh, uh, at uh, four methods of study of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And uh, number one, we'll look at the text method, the text method text of method. study. Mm -hmm. Then we we'll look at uh, the chapter by chapter and uh, book by book. That's a traditional method of study. Mm -hmm. That is chapter by chapter, book by book method. And then look at uh, the topical uh, Bible study method mm -hmm. and then the character Bible study method. So wow. basically four mm -hmm. methods. I know there could be others, but we are trying to summarize for in a simple way for viewers to actually understand how to go about mm -hmm. the study of the, of the word. So and that those four yeah, can work. Yeah, essentially, we're saying we, whichever approach you, you take, yes. uh, it's going to help you. Yes. You know? Um, and, and I like that you have said the traditional one, uh, yes. chapter by chapter, book, uh, by, book, book. by book. Yes, and uh, it works all the time. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Some of us we were just thrown into deep waters in yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. uh, we stumbled, but um, it helps. Yes. So I like those four: uh, textual, topical, uh, chapter by chapter, book by book, and then character. Yes. Um, Geoffrey, you want to add something? I think you yes. put it very rightly. Mm. And so I believe uh, it's up to you to mm. be able to agree or decide mm. on which approach you want to take it. But the main basis should be you want to know God, mm. not to be puffed up with knowledge, with how many verses you can be able to quote off head, mm. not to be able to be puffed up with that you know the Bible so much. But the main thing should be, I want to know God. Mm. And so if we come from the place of, I want to know God, God, reveal yourself to me from the pages of the Bible. Mm. I believe your life will never be the same again. Yeah. Amen. So I feel like telling you, go deeper. <laughs> you know? So yeah. you have given us the four. Yes. Uh, so could, could you now begin to break it down? Uh, take one and just explain it. Uh, what it means and uh, how to go about it. We begin with the, the, texture. the texture. Yeah, yeah, the texture. Actually, the texture is the simplest mm. method of Bible study, but mostly recommended to people as beginners, maybe new believers or teenagers mm. or young children who are beginning to learn the Bible because this is where you focus on only a text or a verse mm. and focus on it and try to read it, understand it, reread it, Maybe you read it in many, very many Bible versions, mm -hmm. and uh, try to understand the words in the in the in the in the in the verse, yeah. and then begin to draw some understanding and some revelation from that text. Mm. Uh, apart from uh, believe, beginners or mm -hmm. young believers, it can also apply to us because yeah. most of the time when we are uh, preachings are going on or you are walking in the street, sometimes a scripture jumps in your mind and your heart. Mm -hmm. And maybe the Holy Spirit is highlighting a scripture when a preacher is preaching or wherever you are. And you need to go and study that text and look at it a little bit more keenly mm -hmm. and look at it in different versions and uh, see what God is saying through that scripture. So it is where you major on a text and uh, look at it in various uh, versions and uh, understand it Try to look at some of the words deeply, uh, maybe in the original languages, if you are able to do that. But uh, by reading different versions, you're able to get a little bit more understanding. And then you're able to know what is the truth that is coming up. And then you can ask yourself the four major questions we asked ourselves last time when we read a scripture, mm. uh, which our brother was speaking about. Who is this? Who is this? Who is speaking in this verse? Mm. And then who is being spoken to in this verse? And then where is this uh, event happening, mm. if there is an event. And then you can also ask yourself, what is being addressed in this verse? And then how is it relevant to me or to my current situation? And then how can I apply the contents of this verse in my personal life? Yeah. So, and then you can draw the conclusion and maybe some actions mm. that you can take after deriving the, uh, the, the application mm. from that text. Mm. So it's where you major on that text yeah. and uh, get the, the riches that are in that verse. And uh, that verse can be able to speak to you in many ways. So it could be one verse or few verses, yes. yeah. but just a text. Yes. Uh, and then you engage it. Yeah. I, I tend to feel like it has a lot to do with the meditation. 
concentrating your mind to, to, to really get the most yes. uh, out of it. And um, I think that, that discipline therefore requires a lot of mental engagement. Yeah. And uh, I mean, the study of the Bible has to involve the whole of you. Hmm. We cannot do it passively. You have to engage your mental capacity. You must engage your spirit man. You must engage your time, emotions. You must be able to concentrate on it. Mm -hmm. If not that, you will be reading the Bible as though you are reading a newspaper. Yeah. It will be more of a magazine. It mm -hmm. will be more of you are going through a storybook. Mm -hmm. But this is the word of God. This is the inspired word, the breath of God. It is the mind of God. It is God himself who wants to reveal his mind to you. Therefore, the textual approach is very important, more so to be able to get the right understanding of what God was saying. Mm. Because you realize when we assume the context or now the textual that you, are, you want to refer to, there is always a great temptation to uh, extrapolate the particular verse or words in to mean what you really want it to mean. Mm. For example, John 10, 10, the Bible says the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. Mm. But now you ask most of those even who are viewing us right now, who is the thief? Mm. Of course, most of us say it's the devil. Well, I wouldn't say yes or no for now. Mm. But then go and get the context. Where was Jesus coming from? How far did he begin with that particular thought line? And now once you now get now the text, mm. you're able even now to glean out the mind of God and the voice of God. And so textual approach, it's very paramount from where I sit mm. to be able to accurately divide the word of truth. As mm. Paul says, study to show thyself an approved workman rightly dividing the word of truth. And that word dividing, it is more of the action where a carpenter with the saw is trying to make a joint. And so he has to be very precise. Mm. He has to be sure. He has to be accurate. And so for us to get them much out of the scriptures, one of the way, textual. Textual. Yeah. So we, we really need to engage with everything that we have. Everything. What do you think about this? Because particularly this part of texture, um, there is also a way we can enhance it yes. where it is a Bible study you are doing with other people. Yes. You know, getting a text and then uh, instead of just engaging, because there are times when you engage alone in your own personal yeah. devotion, but it's also important sometimes to to do it as a group yeah. because there's something you will see in a text mm -hmm. that I will not see yeah. and vice versa and yeah. the same thing. Yeah. So even the, the Bible study where you do as a small group mm -hmm. is very important and, yeah. the, and I think we need to encourage even churches yeah. to encourage a small group study, Bible study, you know, um, uh, you know clusters yes. where people gather and, and do that. Yeah. For example, um, in our church, we have the estate fellowships. Yes. And what they, our leaders do, they, they give us a text. Mm. And then they ask questions, like four or five, and then yeah. you sit down. And every time we meet for that Bible study seg section, I mean, we come up with so much and we leave that place so rich mm -hmm. because we are seeing the same text in different dimensions. Yeah. And I think to me it's very That's enriching. True. That's true. Yeah. And what I do you think about I agree with you, mm. Pastor Mark, on that. Like there is a group we do meet every week on Thursday mm. and we approach the Bible book by book. And so what I came to realize is pick up like a whole, like now we are doing the book of Hebrews. Mm. So you realize when you're doing even chapter one and you are around 13 or 15 of you, mm. you realize what everyone has to get out of that particular chapter. Everyone of you lives there enriched. Wow. Because there is a way in which the Holy Spirit begins to shine the light in that word. Mm. And as every one of you in that room begins to share what God is speaking to them in light of the word of God, mm. there is a lot of edification. Yeah. But now the tricky bit with the word is most people tend to think the study of the word is not spectacular mm. and therefore it is not powerful. Yeah. 
to them powerful study of the Bible of fellowship is when the Holy Ghost is making people to be under 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 his power to slay I mean to be to be on the floor roll down everything else mm. but they forget just by the study of the word the reading of the word verse by verse mm. there is a power in the word mm. that cannot be wished away that's amazing yeah uh, you can say something. I think I wanted to just highlight what he has said about mm -hmm. one of the disadvantages of textual study, yeah. shortcomings, mm -hmm. is that uh, it can be used out of context. And that okay. is very important. Mm -hmm. That's why we said it is just for young believers, people mm -hmm. who are beginning to study the word. They cannot study a whole book, mm -hmm. a whole chapter. They just take a text, major on it, get the truth from it, and then uh, you can do it in a group, as you are saying, so mm -hmm. that you can enhance. Uh, the value that you get from the scripture, yeah. but uh, majorly, it's a beginning point for people who are studying the word. Mm. At least you start with a text, understand it, read it from different uh, Bible versions, and then understand it and draw the conclusions. At least it's not intimidating. Yes. It's just yes, <laughs> something short, and yes. uh, you can be able to assimilate it quickly. Yeah, that's yeah. True. I think that's that's good. Yes. So we only have a few minutes. Maybe you can introduce the second one, and then before we take a break. The, the second one, I uh, would want to look at the traditional method, mm -hmm. the chapter by chapter, book by book, mm -hmm. because uh, I think it overcomes the, the, the shortcomings of the textual mm -hmm. uh, Bible study. This is where you take a chapter, a whole chapter, like Romans chapter 1, mm. you study it uh, fully, maybe you can read it through fast so that you can get uh, the entire, the, the, the context, the, mm. the context of the, and then an overview of it, maybe have uh, a little bit of uh, a theme about it, and then uh, you begin now to get deeper into the verses and the words. Mm. Now, chapter by chapter is very important because it gives you the context, and is able to give you the details that you need. And uh, you are able to get the historical context and all the, the, the issues that you need to understand around a particular uh, scripture or story and that kind of a study. So mm -hmm. uh, chapter by chapter, of course, comes, brings uh, book by book, which is also very important for a kind of a, uh, getting a, 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 an entire or a, a, an overview of the, whole, uh, of the whole book as you begin to study chapter after chapter. So I think uh, chapter by chapter, though historical or traditional, is one of the most accurate one in terms of understanding the whole Bible. Chapter by chapter. Chapter is by a, is chapter, is book, and by book by book. is yes. one of the most accurate. Yes. And I want you to hold that thought because imagine the preacher is saying uh, 30 minutes is over, so we need to take a break okay. and then we'll be back. Okay. So viewers, please don't change the channel. We, we are discussing about Bible study methods and you see we are coming to the tail end of this uh, series and we want to ensure that we are also practical and we are able to help you to know how to start and, uh, and also how to navigate. Thank you for the questions that are coming in. We promise you are going to respond to every question in the next segment. So see you in a few. Sister Talk. Learning to forgive people who offend you. Akichele wakidogo tuk toka job. Na feel sasa uyu ata hana kazi yangu. A sister is a gift to the community, a friend to many, a golden heart to the meaning of life. Me, I'm picky. You know me, I'm very sensitive. You know, the, you know that thing of being sensitive is okay, but we shouldn't wear it like a crown. Yeah. On Sister Talk. Auntie is so respectful mm. that every time Auntie, uh, your your husband calls Auntie. Auntie mm -hmm. says, "Nam." No. You know the ones that are offending. <laughs> no. We engage on social issues, life challenges, economic empowerment. Sometimes we need a friend who will slap you to reality and think about your life. We share various experiences, all rounded through godly and biblical values. The original intentions of God from the beginning, that His pattern was that He may replicate Himself in man. Sister Talk. Every Thursday, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m.
welcome back viewer. I thank you so much for staying tuned and uh, I believe that you are learning uh, a lot from our discussion. Uh, before we move on, I want to um, come to the book segment because in this program we have a book segment and today I want to uh, introduce you to the study Bible, New King James Version. It's called the Holman uh, Study Bible. It's a very big volume and uh, we have it in our bookshop. This is a, a Bible that will help you to study the Bible because that's what we are discussing here. And uh, it's good to have a traditional normal Bible, but it's also good to have this study one so that in your personal study you can use it as an aid uh, so that you can get the most out of it. It's in Elevation Bookshop, uh, which is located along uh, Moy Avenue, Kenya Cinema Plaza. And um, I believe that there is a number there on the screen. You can call it and uh, somebody is going to help you to know how to get it. Even if you want to order it to be, to be taken or to be brought where you are, that's something that can be arranged and it's going to be a blessing. Thank you so much. Um, Samuel, uh, we are just cut you off yes. as we are talking about uh, the second study yes. method. Yes. Chapter by chapter, book by book. So yes. please just continue from where you had stopped and explain more. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, we were touching on the second method of Bible, or study of the Bible. We were looking at chapter by chapter, book by book. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's good to say that uh, it's, it's one of the most systematic way of studying yeah. the Bible. Because you're able to go from one book to another and uh, from one chapter to another. So if you start like the book of Genesis, you're able to cover Genesis chapter 1, study it, go to chapter 2, study it until you finish the book of uh, Genesis. So in the chapter by chapter book and book method of study, you are able to cover the whole Bible and you're able to get the context of the Bible. And uh, it is the most, uh, exp uh, ex uh, is, 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 the, is the best one for getting the context of the Bible because the Bible, and, until you get the context, uh, you may not be able really to, to use the Bible correctly. And understanding the stories of the Bible uh, require that you read the whole story. Like, uh, for instance, I we were doing some study with my children about uh, what Apostle David was doing recently about uh, the inheritance, the generational inheritance. Uh, from Abraham going down there mm. uh, to the children of Israel, the 12, tri tri the 12 tribes of Israel, and, go, and these blessings goes until uh, Jesus now shares the blessing to us. Now, un unless you have the, uh, that kind of a study where you have read the Bible in its entirety, you may not really catch up with the flow of the blessing of Abraham until uh, Christ is able to give the blessing to us. So this is one of the best way to study the, the Bible because it's able to capture the context, because you're able to move from chapter to chapter and uh, from one book to another. And at the end of the day, you're able to cover the whole Bible. Mm. Yes. Amazing. You want to and just for you on that, again, I've always been able to look also at the Bible as um, a textbook, essentially, if mm. you look at it from that dimension where there is unit one, two, three, four, up to maybe 20. Mm. So my question is, do you begin with the unit 20 before going to unit one, or do you begin from the first one as you go on? Mm. So that approach is equally very much valid. Mm. It is very much encouraged as well. Yeah. Like how would you relate with uh, the Levitical practice, practice of the Bible if you don't even know how they reach there and where they are? Mm -hmm. And then now, how will you still be able to relate what the author of the book of Hebrews is uh, talking about the sacrifice if we don't know what was happening in the book of Levi Leviticus? Mm -hmm. So you understand uh, book by book, it's equally a very pronounced way, and I would also highly recommend the same. Wow, that's, that's yeah. good. So uh, let's read the Bible. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the, the, that's the bottom line. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Before we move uh, to the other two, um, there are two questions that are coming yeah. and I'm going to ask each of you. So the first one is, what did Jesus mean uh, when he said um, he did come to abolish but to establish the law? And where do we draw the line when it comes to the Old and the New Testament teachings? Um, yeah, where do we draw the line? Old and New. And what does Jesus mean when he says he did not come to abolish but fulfill? I think maybe I can, you can respond to that. Let me respond first. Mm. 
for you to understand the New Testament, you must understand the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. The Old Testament is a shadow of the New Testament. Yeah. The Old has a lot of shadows, a lot of types being used, while now the New Testament is now the re reality. It is, um, for example, let me use this word. Like you go in the Old Testament, just like what I was talking about, sacrifice of sin, killing of the lamb, uh, the shedding of blood and all that. But now you come in the New Testament, whatsoever was happening there was achieved in Jesus Christ. Mm. For example, look at John 1 verse 29, part B, the Bible says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. But now you go in the Old Testament, it was a physical lamb. But now in the New, Jesus is that lamb. So we don't need now to kill a lamb now for your sins, wherever you are coming from, wherever you are tuned in, the blood was already shed by Christ Jesus. Mm. So the old is a shadow, mm. a picture, a reflection, while the new is now the reality. So whatever you see in the new yeah. has been fulfilled. I, I don't know what you're saying. Yeah. I, I think it's important, also bearing in mind what the brother is asking. Yes. Because um, th th there is a problem that is present with us. Yeah. I know of certain preachers who don't preach from the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And even if they do, they rarely do so. Uh -huh. Probably going to the book of Proverbs uh, and the book of Psalm. Yeah. But they, have, they avoid entirely the, the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Um, and you find sometimes they even say the teachings of Jesus d don't apply to the New Testament believer. What Jesus was teaching, he was teaching the Old Testament Jewish people. And so even the Sermon on the Mount, they say it doesn't apply to us. And um, there's a historical genesis of, of all of that. But you see, that's something with us. And I like what you have said, Geoffrey, that we have to understand mm -hmm. that the, the New Testament is a continuation yes. of the Old Testament. Very true. There are few things that don't carry over yeah. to the New Testament, mm -hmm. but majority of them is basically um, the reality of the shadow. Very true. So these shadows but this is the reality. Yeah. So we need to read the whole of it. The whole of it. And yeah. allow me to interject you. Viewer, you can go with us to Luke chapter 24, if you can, and the 44th verse. The Bible says, And he said unto them, that is Jesus, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Mm. Then he opened, then opened he their understanding that they may understand the scriptures. So you cannot claim you want to find Jesus only in the New Testament. While Jesus is saying he was being found in the in Moses, that is in the law, Genesis to Deuteronomy, he was found there. He was found in the prophets, they spoke about him. He was found in the Psalms, it was written about him. Therefore, there is no way anyone can claim they will only work with one part of the Bible because Jesus Christ is from the book of Genesis and flows all through into the New Testament. I want to throw a question yeah. to you um, somewhere in connection to yes. what he just said at the end, yes. towards the end of his um, contribution. Yeah. Uh, Nesh Nimo says, I love this conversation. My concern is how can we empower believers to see Christ through the scriptures, especially the Old Testament? Because in uh, the volume of the book is written. Yes, okay. yes, so yes. How do we see Christ in the Old Testament? I think I will start by saying uh, we need to understand Jesus as the fulfillment of the Old Testament. And therefore, as uh, our brother Je uh, Geoffrey is saying, all the Old Testament scriptures point to Jesus. If it's an issue of a sacrificial lamb, Jesus has become a sacrificial lamb. So we don't have to slaughter lambs for the forgiveness of sin. Mm. 
if you talk about the Passover, where they had to slaughter a lamb for their protection, Jesus has become our Passover lamb. So Jesus is a fulfillment of the Old Testament uh, scriptures. And what we need, we need to have more Bible studies, where people are, are, are being taught the word. I think what we have, we have a lot of gimmicks, a lot of, uh, a, 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 lot of, a lot of confusion in our generation, and there is no real Bible teaching in, the, in our days. What we have is throwing a scripture here and another scripture there, but we need to have a doctrinal teaching where we're able to base. Like, uh, you can look at the sermon of, uh, of Stephen. Yeah. He's coming from the Old Testament, uh, coming through until the New Testament. So all these people, even uh, look at Paul. Paul was able now to connect after salvation, after meeting with Christ and seeing his glory and knowing him, he was able now to change from now becoming a critic of the follower of Jesus, but yet he knew the Old Testament scriptures. So he was able to develop, to change his understanding and now walk in the truth. So I think we need more Bible studies and engagements. We need people to be guided on how to study so that people can understand how uh, the Old Testament uh, operations and uh, uh, laws are able to have, have been fulfilled now in Christ Jesus. Yeah, and, and I think also adding to that, uh, maybe responding to my viewer, uh, Nesh, is um, for, for us to see Christ in the Old Testament, we first of all must be thoroughly, thoroughly um, educated on the Gospels. We have to study the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, yeah. and also to really study the Pauline letters. Mm -hmm so that we can see Christ in reality, not yeah. a shadow, yeah. reality. Yeah. We say, this is the person, mm -hmm. this is Christ. Yeah. Then after that, when you go to the Old Testament, you'll just begin to see Christ popping up, mm -hmm. particularly in, uh, in, in the characters. Yeah. You know, and we'll come to the Bible study yeah. method of character. Yeah. You, you, see, you see Isaac, and then you see him at being taken up the mountain. Yeah. Then you say, ah, even Jesus was yeah. taken there yes. as a sacrifice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it will be very easy to see Christ once you know the Gospels. Yeah. You look at Joseph, how he was sold for 30 pieces of yes. silver. Mm -hmm. Then your mind clicks. <laughs> Judas yes. betrayed Jesus for yeah. 30 pieces of silver. So yeah. you begin to see Jesus in Joseph. Very true. You see Moses, mm -hmm. how he delivers the children of Israel. Then you see Jesus. You yeah. see Aaron. Yes. Mm -hmm. You see Joshua. Yeah. And the list goes on and on and on. That's yeah. true. Uh, the same thing you see uh, in, in, in forms of objects, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, how, for example, the tabernacle, um, you look at what, what Paul said about the rock yes. that was gushing out water. The he bronze said, serpent. It, it was Christ, then yeah. the serpent. Yes. So it, is, it will be very easy to see Christ mm -hmm. in the Old Testament mm -hmm. once you know the New Testament. That's very true. And uh, that's good. Now, there's a, there's a question here that is taking us back. Yes to the matter of the Old Testament, because I think we really need to exhaust it. Yeah. Uh, okay, Ebi Nangila um, is saying, wow, the attitude of Bible study must be to know God. Yeah. You know, mm. they, that's the motive you are talking about. Yeah. So then another question is, there are other Christians that dwell so much on the Old Testament, mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah. see, yeah. <laughs> including making the mosaic sacrifices, yeah. mm -hmm. vice versa, mm -hmm. and uh, how, we, uh, how can we as Bible uh, readers balance Old and New Testament to avoid becoming shakaholic? That's what it means. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to extend that question that has been asked. I've been seeing a lot of... Uh, um, a, a lot in the church uh, where the church is going to Judaism. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've always been having a question about that. Uh, are we trying to take the shadow back, bring the shadow back here? Mm -hmm. You know, for example, and I'm not saying this in a, in a, in a you know, a derogatory way, yeah. but it's just a concern mm -hmm. where people put on the prayer show. Yeah. And they feel when you pray with a prayer show, your prayers have, are more powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, you see people going to Jerusalem to the Temple Mount yeah. on the Wailing Wall, yeah. and they believe that when they pray there, then it will have more power. Mm -hmm. You realize our songs are filled with Hebraic words, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Even, we are beginning to forget the name Jesus, mm -hmm. which is above every name. We, when we say Yahweh, when yeah. we say Adonai, we yes. feel now we are in the third heaven, mm -hmm. you know. 
And all of those things, I'm not saying they are wrong, but are we not going back to the Old Testament? What, what is I think I, I, I would say this. Hmm. Somebody said something very powerful, that every time we lose the spirituality, hmm. the reality that hmm. Jesus brought in the New Testament, yeah. the new covenant relationship with the Father, every time we are bankrupt uh, on that aspect of spiritual union with Christ and with the Father, Mm -hmm. and the restoration of fellowship with the Father through Jesus and on the, on the cross, uh, we begin to put so many things to cover that. Yeah. So we begin to put on clothes. Uh, we begin to put on so many th other things to mm -hmm. cover that, that bankruptcy, that what we are missing. Yeah. Because if you have a heart connection, heart to heart, spiritual connection with God, mm -hmm. a relationship that is growing, you don't need all those things. You don't need uh, shawls to pray. Mm -hmm. You don't need uh, you don't even need a lot of anointing oil to engage the Holy Spirit. Uh, you also don't need uh, all these things, all these things that you are talking about. You don't need to slaughter lambs. Like people are, there are, there are places now where the emergence of the slaughtering of uh, lambs has come up and it's becoming a major challenge. So we are going back to the, to the, to the, to the types and shadows because we are missing the knowledge of the New Testament covenant relationship with the Father which was restored by Christ so that we can walk with God and we can have fellowship with God. That fellowship we lost at Eden is what Christ as a seed came to restore. All the other things that were done in the Old Testament were trying to heal them, the main, the big, touching the main problem, mm. and it was not cured. So many lambs had to be slaughtered, so many things had to be done to restore man to God, and it was not possible. Only Christ, fulfillment, coming, the coming of the seed the seed of uh, the seed of of of, of, of the woman, mm. and uh, the sacrifice, the uh, this entire sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, was the culmination of so many types and shadows that were done in the Old Testament. It's amazing. You know, I really feel that that should be a, a series by itself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where we talk about the the connection between the Old Testament and the New Testament, mm -hmm. and where is the point of departure? Yeah. All right. Yes. So I think that's something we really need to yes. to, to dig deep mm -hmm. and to be able to bring it out because I think uh, it's a major concern. Well, uh, Nyokabi uh, Jackie says learning a lot. God bless you, men of God. Amen. I mean, she's following and uh, learning a lot. Uh, many comments that are coming. Rahab, well articulated, men of God. Uh, Catherine Moraidi, learning a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, people are following and uh, they are learning a lot. And questions are coming in. Viewers, thank you. Uh, for sending your comments, your questions, and engaging with us. We are truly, truly grateful. Um, so um, I want us to, because we only have 10 minutes, just touch on uh, the other two uh, before we even uh, ask any other question on uh, Bible study method. The, the, the other two, please, just, just mention. Okay, the other two uh, methods of study, uh, the third one is the topical, the topical uh, Bible study method. Yeah. This is a very simple one, and most of us, especially those who are ministers, they are used to it, where you take a particular uh, topic, and then you begin to look at it in the entire Bible. So maybe you can decide to study about love, mm. and then you can use uh, uh, the, 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 the concordance to get all the verses that speak about that particular uh, topic. And then you can read all the scriptures, and the, maybe the books that uh, touch on that particular topic, and then gather the, gather the, 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 the knowledge, that, uh, the necessary knowledge about that topic from different uh, chapters and verses. And then you begin to draw the conclusions and uh, maybe some of the applications that you can make concerning that topic. So it's actually using a topic to study the Bible. Mm. Yes. So topical. Uh, and the, the, this, this principle, uh, and I think it relates very well with the topical approach. Yeah. Um, and, and even before I, I ask you a question, basically what you, what, what you are saying, Samuel, is in topical, um, you can take a certain subject that is yes. taught thoroughly in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, you want to know everything about healing. Yes. So you look at the Bible, what does it say about healing mm -hmm. from the beginning yeah. to the end? Yes. Uh, look at something like the blood of Jesus, yeah. you know? Um, look at something like the Holy Spirit and mm -hmm. you know there are so many themes yes. in the Bible that we really yes. need to study. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the question is Geoffrey, 
In regards to that, can you say a little bit about this thing called the law of first mention? Thank you. The law of first mention has to do with, for example, if you have something like tithing, mm. where was it first mentioned in the Bible? Yeah. And so when you're able to get hold of the law of the first mention and then you're able to run with it, it gives you a conclusive approach on that particular subject matter. Mm. Mm. Um, thank you for asking that. For example, the first time that particular word is used is in the book of Genesis 14, mm. verse number 18, mm. where Abraham gave a tenth of all that he had to Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. And so you realize Abraham, for example, lived before the law. Mm. You get that. Therefore, when someone wants to say that tithing is of the Old Testament, therefore you come and ask, when was the law begun? When was the law instituted? Was Abraham under that law? Mm. And so that's just an example. You can look at something, for example, giving. Where is it first mentioned in the Bible? And so you trace it back and begin to follow through mm. the entire Bible for a conclusive understanding on that particular matter. On that particular matter. And, and you know, there's one Bible teacher I really love yeah. what he said. Yeah. He said, um, when, when, we, when we deal with the law of first mention, mm. we also need to deal with the law of last mention. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and he said, the law of the last mention uh, seals the deal. Yes. Uh, okay. it, it confirms okay. it. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, one of the principles of the law of the last mention is, if the first mention, of course, is always in the Old Testament, yeah. and that matter is mentioned again, mm -hmm. and the last mention is in the New Testament, yes. then it means it carries yeah. over from the Old to the New. Yes. Amen. So, uh, taking, for example, the matter of tithing, yeah. The law first mentioned is Genesis 14. Yes. But then when is it mentioned last? Is yeah. it Malachi chapter 3? No. If it was mentioned last, Malachi chapter 3, mm -hmm. then we will say tithing is Old Testament. It's Old Testament. But then the last mention is in Hebrews. It's in Hebrews, 7. yes. So that means it carries over mm -hmm. to the New Testament. Yes. Yeah. And, and I found the first mention and the last mention always need to go hand in hand. Amen. To get the whole counsel. Yeah. Uh, we have five minutes now. Yes. Ca can you mention the, the number four? Okay, number four is character Bible study. Yeah. This is where you take a Bible character or personality, mm. like David yeah. or Saul, mm -hmm. and then you begin to look at the, what the entire Bible talks about that person. Mm. And there are people in the Bible uh, who cut across the, uh, across the board. They are mentioned like Esau. You can think that Esau is only in Genesis, but you can see Esau in so many verses in the New Testament. So you look at that personality, in respect of the entire Bible. You get all the verses, you can do that through a concordance, mm -hmm. get all, all the places that he's mentioned, yeah. and then read those scriptures, reread them, use different versions, uh, and then begin to make some summaries and conclusions and applications and learn lessons from that person. If he's failed like Samson, you know why did he fail? How did he, God react to certain aspects or behaviors or actions of these people? Learn from them because God doesn't change. God is able to show his character, maybe anger, or he's happy with people based on what they do. So when you study the character of men in the Bible, you're able to get what is this that God does not like mm. or God likes. Yeah. And you can draw that from character Bible study. Mm. Yes. The characters of men. And uh, th th that's amazing. And of course, um, I, I also feel that when, when we study characters in the Bible, we always need to look at how that character is found in Christ. Yes. Uh, because sometimes we take the character directly and apply it to us. Yes. Yeah. Uh, which is true, it's important, but it, 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 that character must first of all go in Christ. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, then Amen. resurface to yeah. us. Yeah. And uh, th that's, that's a very important character. You know, taking Gideon and studying yes. him. Yeah. then see how does Gideon apply in Christ, yeah. mm -hmm. and then how does he apply to me. To, to me. Yeah. Um, say something about that character. Yeah, I think you've put it very well. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the downside of that to most of the people is they tend to justify their sin by the characters. Wow. For example, mm -hmm. Solomon, the wisest man, had how many wives? Mm. Therefore, it's not wrong for I to have only two or three. Mm. David, a man after God's own heart, what really transpired? 
So what I'm doing, even David was doing it, is not wrong. So I will say, yes, study them, yes, but look what is it that is in Christ. Mm. And then apply it into your life. Mm. But that which does not rhyme with Christ, discard it and know that God was still using them despite what they were going through. Mm. But it is not now to mean you have to do the same thing. Yeah. If it were the same thing, mm. then become Jacob and get Leah instead of Rachel. Mm. Yeah. And you wouldn't like it. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, through Christ, yes. everything must go through Christ. Yeah. So, Samuel, I, I really want to appreciate the, you, you taking the time just to take us through uh, step by step. And of course, Geoffrey, thank you for uh, bringing in words of wisdom. So, we have said um, when you begin to study the Bible, you can use either of those four. Yeah. You can begin, which you have said the simplest where you just take a certain small text in the Bible and then dissect it. And if it is very hard, you can do Bible study with some people and then, you know, just look at it. Yes. Um, the other way is the traditional method, you know, chapter by chapter, book by book. But then you can try the topical. Yes. And I always find the topical to be very, very enriching. Mm -hmm. Where you're looking at a topic and Remember some years ago, I, the Holy Spirit led me to, to study the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the Holy Spirit led me to study the Holy Spirit, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. to study Him, yeah. you know, from Genesis all the way to Revelation. And, and that's very good. Yes. I also like the matter of the, the you know, character, you know, and, and that by the way is very simple. Yes. Because it's enjoyable, it's a story you are reading, mm. you know, just take a character, study as the Holy Spirit to show you a little bit more about it, and that's, that's going to be good. Um, honestly, I wish you had all the time, yes, but sir. time is up. Yeah. And uh, viewers, I want to thank you so much for staying tuned and uh, into this discussion and just following through. And I know you have been blessed by this series. Uh, my dear friends, uh, Samuel Karanja, Geoffrey Mashia, have been uh, committed to come every week uh, to be with me in this show. And I'm truly, truly grateful. Thank you for the sacrifice. Welcome. Uh, thank you for taking the time to come. I know you guys are very busy in the marketplace. Yeah. But uh, may the Lord bless you. Amen. And viewers, I know you have been enriched. Amen. And uh, we have this commitment from here onwards. We'll go back to the Bible. Mm -hmm. Let's study the Bible. Um, and it, it's, it's really a passion that we have. And uh, as I've been saying, let, let it not just be information. I pray some of us will do something about it. Let's go back to the book. Because that's how we are going to preserve a generation. And I know some of you, as you get into the word, God is going to raise you to be ministers of the gospel. And it will be a blessing to your generation. Next week, we are going to begin on a new series. And I don't want to introduce it now. Uh, please stay tuned. Uh, you're going to see the promos. And uh, it's going to be such an engagement. And uh, I look forward to that. So shalom till next time from Samuel, Geoffrey, and myself. We love you. We are praying for you. Keep the faith. Amen.